Hello there everyone and once again welcome to this short reflection coming from Kalin Parish Mans. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Today I want to talk about the parallels between faith and golfing. I had a conversation recently with someone and it reminded me it's not just the church that is always looking for new members and wondering how it can engage with the young. Just about every organisation and group in society is. Once upon a time there were waiting lists for many golf clubs. That's not the case now. They are desperate to get new members and just like every other organisation are struggling to come to terms with contemporary society and why people aren't joining things. Now I'll come clean, I'm not a golfer, I've never played it, I'm not really that interested in it, but many people I have known and do know uh, enjoy it very much indeed. So three points, three point sermon. Firstly is the need to practice, then the need to participate, and of course to persevere. So let's begin with the first one, the need to practice. There is a story about President Grant. He was General Grant during the American Civil War and then became President of the United States after that. He was on a visit to Scotland and came to St Andrews and of course golfing was in its infancy then but he was being introduced to this new sport. And of course he came along as an observer and he saw uh, someone uh, at the tee about to, to um, use the club and the ball and to start the game. So as he watched, the ball was missed and a tuft of grass flew in the air and in a second attempt and the same thing happened. And Grant apparently said to one of his advisors, I can see that uh, this sport would give one a bit of exercise, but pray tell me, what is the point of the ball? I'm sure many golfers will appreciate that story. I remember being in Edinburgh and I used to walk the dog around Portobello Park and there was an area of, of rough where it separated the park from the, the little golf course there and I used to walk the dog there. But it meant going to the end where the, uh, the, there was a, a tee and golfers were often there in that corner and I would walk the dog through the rough part. But I remember heading off and there was four women at, the, at this particular tee. And as I walked along, uh, because the fair, fairway was that way and the, the rough area was that way and I was walking that way. And I heard this lady's voice say to me, oh, that's right, just walk in front of us. And I was kind of puzzled and I, I confess I was a bit cheeky because I turned around and I said, Listen, my dear, if you're worried about hitting me, you shouldn't be on the golf course. Uh, and that, that to me, uh, was a story of the need to practice uh, as a golfer if you're, if you're going to uh, play the game properly. Exactly the same with the Christian faith. When Jesus said, come follow me and I will make you fishers of people. That's in Matthew chapter 4 verse 19. He was like the rabbi, and they were the disciples, they were the learners. And we talk about practicing the faith. I must admit, I've often heard of, uh, when someone says they're a Roman Catholic, often they're asked, are you a practicing Catholic? I've never heard anyone say that about Protestants. But Protestants practice their faith, or at least they should, as much as anyone else. To be a Christian is to practice your faith. If you're not practicing your faith, you can hardly be a Christian. And disciple is about being a learner. Being a disciple is about being a learner. To take up golf is firstly to learn the rules of the game, uh, to know what clubs are what. I know there's all these different types of clubs. I've no idea what they're all for or what they do but you golfers will. And then of course, to be able to use these. And you can only learn 
the game of golf by playing it. We can only learn the Christian faith by being involved in it, in it by practicing it, by being disciples. In the book of Acts, it refers to Christians being described by others as the people of the way. That's an interesting description. The people of the way. Whose way? Well, the way of Jesus. And we are called to learn that. And to learn it, we need to practice it. Then secondly, participate. Those of you who are golfers will know that the great joy of the game is often in the friendships and the relationships that you make over the years as you play golf. The fun that you have, the stories that you can tell over a coffee or a drink, and the laughter that can come from various anecdotes and instances and incidents that happen on the golf course. It's the same with the Christian faith. Participation is the key. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And that's all you need for a church, two or three. You can't have a church with one person. The Christian faith is not a solitary business. It's a corporate business. It's a family business. And those of you who are involved in golf or any other sport for that matter. There's a community of people who play that sport and to participate in that is usually a tremendous blessing. So too for the Christian faith. To be part of the church is to be part of the church family and that's where the friendship and the fun and indeed the whole purpose of what the faith is about comes to the fore. In the book of Hebrews it reminds us that we shouldn't neglect meeting together but we're there to encourage one another, to stir one another up in the things of the faith. That gets to the heart of what the church is about. And just as it's very difficult to be a, a, a participant in a sport without others, so too to be a follower of Jesus without participation in the life of a community is very difficult. And that's why when people talk about the churchless Christianity that exists in our modern world, where people identify as Christians but don't seem to go anywhere and are not attached anywhere, seems rather strange. So we're called to practice our faith and that involves participating in it. And the third one, to persevere. I'm quite sure there are many of you who play golf, who have improved. Your game has improved by persevering through. Even times when you thought you might not get the hang of it. And sometimes when we think of sport, there, there can be moves or there can be techniques that we take a wee time to master. And sometimes when it comes together, it's like, yes, getting it. But you persevere to get there. So too with the Christian faith. The theme of perseverance is very clear in the scriptures. Paul, at the end of his life, not long before he was martyred, he said in 1 Timothy 4, 7, or 2 Timothy, sorry, 4, 7, that I have fought the good fight, I've finished the race, I've kept the faith. In other words, he has persevered. And as he's close to the end of his life, he's able to say that statement, to look back with, not with, with pride in, in a, a bad sense, but with a sense of satisfaction. I've kept going, I've finished that race and I've kept the faith. Perseverance not only is important in sport for us to get somewhere with it, but very important for life in general, but in particular for the faith. 
that we keep going. What we start, we finish. Because what God started, he will finish. And he is the one who can bless us. And you know, along the way, sometimes we might feel that we're up against it. And that's then we just get a little blessing. God's grace can shine upon us, especially when we think, oh, this is hard work. And it can just change everything. Now, there's a wee naughty story at the end. When I was younger, in the local golf course, um, well, between Bowness and Lundlithgow, and we used to go up and hide in the woods. And there was, there was a hole there that was at the back of a, a big hill, which meant the golfers had to chip over this hill. They couldn't see, they were, they were actually um, hitting blind. And sometimes the balls would come over, they'd miss the green at the, the foot of the hill completely and go way off into the woods. Or sometimes they ended at, at the edge of the green. And when that happened, we would nip over, get the ball and either put it in the hole or put it very close to the hole. Then we'd hide in, in the woods. The golfers would come round and when they saw they either got a hole in one or in actual fact, or, or, or the, the ball had gone in the hole rather, rather than a hole in one, um, or the ball was right next to the hole. They were usually they're bragging, they were excited, they felt really good. Now, that was a, a naughty trick. But you know, sometimes when we're playing a game or whether we're involved in the faith, we just need a break. We just need a little blessing. And sometimes God does that for us. He takes that ball and he does something with it. And in a sense, there's an opening and the sun shines and there's a bit of grace to help us as we are persevering in this faith. May God grant you these moments of grace as you persevere, as you participate, and as you practice the way of Jesus. Let us pray. Lord, Lord, how often do you have a smile on your face as you watch our attempts at following Jesus? But the very fact that we're trying is enough. And your grace is good enough to give us a lift when we need it. But remind us today that we shouldn't be hiding. We shouldn't be trying to escape the responsibilities that you want us to discharge. But that you would continue to lead us by the hand. To show us the way. And grant us grace every day as we seek to follow Jesus. May that be our prayer this coming week. In Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, thank you for watching and listening. God be with you in these coming days. Amen.